Hi, in a previous video, we explored the new landscape of data sufficiency DS questions in GMAT Focus Edition. Primarily, we focused on their shift from pure context to real context and the addition of verbal reasoning questions. Now it's time to dive deeper into verbal reasoning questions themselves. In this video series, we will break down three official, difficult, brand new verbal reasoning DS questions, showing you the variety they come in. But more importantly, we'll show you how the skills we discussed earlier can be applied to solve them. If you're wondering what skills I'm talking about, I'm linking the video up for you. Now, our goal here is very simple. We want to give you the tools and the understanding needed to confidently tackle any verbal reasoning question you get on your test. Let's get started. First thing I'm going to discuss is the variety of verbal questions that you will have. So look at this. There are these three types of questions that you can have in verbal reasoning. First is conditions applied to textual information. Then you have conditions applied to tabulated data. And then finally, comparative analysis. Don't worry if the terms don't make sense to you. We will discuss each type one by one. But before all of that, let's just quickly recap what is this process that you will use every time to solve these questions. The keywords are highlighted for you. Well, regardless of the type of verbal reasoning DS question, you know, any of the types you saw, we will always follow the same process. You will own the data set, understand it really well, immerse yourself in it. Then you will visualize the approach to answer the main question asked before you jump into the statements. And then you will execute the approach that you just built using DS solution framework. It's a data sufficiency question. There is a framework that you follow for all questions in this type. Now we will see this process in action for each variety of questions one by one but in this video we will take up only one variety. Then in the next set of videos we will take up the other two as well. So in this one I'm going to take this first type conditions applied to textual information and how are we going to do this? Let's just see this official question. This is a difficult question 645 plus level. Just give this a shot before we start discussing. Done? Now let's discuss this together. What's your first step? In the process, you know your first step is to own the data set, completely understand every bit of it. In this now, the first step is to translate the data set. What does that include? It means you carefully read the passage here, all of the given information before your statements, this part here. You carefully read it one part at a time and convert this passage into your own notes. What is the intent? that you do not need to refer to the passage again while evaluating the statements. A quick test of whether you already have this skill set or not is, think about this, if while solving such questions, when you're evaluating the statements, if you see yourself going back to the passage, then this is an indication that you need to work on this skill set. You should not have to come back. So we'll focus on just that. Let's remove the statements and work on only the passage. Perfect. Here we go. Now let's start translating, writing our notes, creating our notes for the situation. First, this passage actually presents two conditions for the town that they visited last summer. What are those two conditions? First, it's a town neither of them had visited before. So if I write this condition down, condition one is that O and R have not visited this town. So Let's write this in this way. We have the town and it is not visited by O and R. That's your first condition. Then when you read the question further, it says for the summer trips, they have always chosen to visit a town that Rena would have liked to visit unless Ocean had been to that town before. This is where you got your second condition. So what this is saying is that your town should have two characteristics. One, R wished to visit this place and then O had not 
already visited this place. These are the two conditions we have here. Then it goes on to say, Rina had visited town F and G, Ocean had not visited J or K. So it's actually talking about four different towns here and we have information about them. Now, this passage, if I write down, if I write down the given information also from here, you will see R visited F, G, O not visited. I'm just putting this in really, you know, shorthand. You don't have to be very, very clear and grammatical. This is the information we have. So, this is what I know. Now, the question asks, did they visit one of these four towns last summer? That means, that means, did they visit, did they visit, let's just put all four names here, F or G or J or K. Now, see what you've done. All of this together is the translation of this passage in your own words. Now, we have the given information, we have the final question, everything written here. So, my question to you is, are we ready to move to the statements now? No, absolutely not. We need to draw inferences at this stage so that we thoroughly own the data set and can visualize the approach more directly. Till now, we've listed the things we've read. We haven't really made sense of all of the information. So, using this piece of given information and these conditions together, we will be able to draw some inferences. Then only will we, will we be ready to go to the next stage. So, that is your second step in owning the data. Data set. Let's put that here. We already wrote down the first step, translate it. Second is to draw inferences. And you do this as you've understood the question till now, as you've done the translation. Keep assimilating information as you read, never collect things for later. Okay, so what do we have again? We have, let's only use this part now, we have four towns here. I have F and G and J and K. Let's just see all the information we have. So, I know about F that R has visited F. So, what does this mean then? Because R has already visited it, uh, visited F, F can't be the one they visited last summer because of the condition we have here that this town should not be visited by O and R. I'm talking about the first condition here. F is out. Then you look at G. Same treatment for G. If R had already visited G, then G is not going to be the one for last summer. And this again came from the first condition only. Now you look at J and K. So J and K are not visited by O. That is one thing we know. Now, I have no information about J and K with respect to R, whether R visited them or not. So, these two, I right now have nothing to reject them. These two are in the running. One of these could be the town that they visited. So, we know for sure at least that it did not go to F or G. So, you see, by drawing this inference, we were now able to shortlist to two candidates from four. Instead of four towns, we had to think about it's only down to two. So, this is where we've really completely owned the data set, did all of the steps. And now we're ready to move to the next step, which is to visualize our approach. What is it that we will see in individual statements? How will we assess them? So, we'll take this information forward, all of this part here, and see how we will analyze our statements. Look again what the question finally asked. Keep that in mind at all times. You want to see whether these two visited F or G or J or K. So, it's only about these four and your question is about whether these were visited or not. So, think about it. You need to just find out if they went to J or K, obviously because F and G were out. For this, what do you need? Again, look at your conditions. You need the town not to be visited by both of them and it should be something that are wished and O not visited. So, essentially, if I talk about J and K, there are some things I can already tick mark. Look how O not visited. That part is taken care of for J and K. It's only whether R wished to visit these places 
and whether R had actually visited or not visited these places. O is now out of the game. So your decision now is down to only what R wished and whether R had visited J or K. And we can actually tabulate this nicely to, to be able to visualize the situation properly. You're only talking about R, right? So let's think about R wish and R not visited. These are two answers you want. And you want it for both of the towns. You want it for J and K. So think about this like this table. And you want to find out answers to these two questions for each town. Now, as we assess each statement, if we get a clear answer about R's wishes, R's visiting history, we will be able to answer the question asked. So with this information, we are ready to move to step three. And what is step three? Execute this approach that you have built. And we're going to see this with statement one and this visualization of the approach that we did before. Let's read. This statement tells us that Rina had never visited J, Ocean had never visited F. Town F is not even in the running anymore. We had rejected town F earlier only. That means this piece of information is of no use to me. We only see that Rina had never visited down J, which means I have a yes to this question, Rina not visited. But what about the wish? Do I have that? No. So I put a question mark here. I still have no information. This was a very interesting statement because you see how only one part of the statement, first of all, was beneficial for our assessment. The rest of it, the second part was not even needed. This actually shows the power of careful analysis and drawing inferences at optimum points in the solution. Thus, this statement is not sufficient because it did not give me everything I wanted, which means A and D are rejected. Now let's look at statement number two and keep everything that we had till here. Now it says Ocean would have liked to visit either town G or town K. Ocean. Do we even care about Ocean here? No, nothing can be filled in the table since we only wanted to see what R wished or where R had visited before. So this statement actually helps me fill nothing into the table, does not help me in the analysis that we wanted to do and therefore statement 2 is also insufficient alone. We are going to reject choice B also. Now let's take both statements together and see if they'll work. Okay, here we go. What did you get from statement one? Remember, Rina had not visited J, but we did not know anything about the wish. And statement two actually helped us fill nothing. Even now, combined, nothing changes. We do not care about ocean here in this assessment. And therefore, even now, all of this information is in question marks. And so, even together, the statements are not sufficient, which makes E the correct answer. Very, very interesting question. Let's nicely summarize everything that we did here, the key features of this question. So this is first of all the entire question you had. Now features we'll talk one by one. Let's only and only talk about the question first. What was given to you? You had conditions given for the selection of the town that they visited last year. And it was all textual information as you see. These conditions were also part of all of that text, this information was given about the four towns. Now, once we read the question, we decided our approach. We did quite a lot of things. First thing we did was extracted the passage in our notes. This was part of owning the data set. We drew inferences also before adding any new information from the statements. This is something you always have to do. Assimilate information as you go. After that, we visualized the approach. We created a framework. How are we going to assess the statements? We created that box that everything depended on R. And then finally, we executed the DS approach. Looked at one statement, rejected it, moved to the other statement individually, then combined because they were both insufficient. 
and that is how we finally got the answer just observe how we did not refer to the passage once we took the notes we saved so much time that people often go back and read and try to find things again we didn't have to do that also we were able to sift through irrelevant information because we had a solid framework to assess the choices case in point being this statement here let me just quickly show this to you when we looked at statement 2 we realized okay ocean visiting or wishing to visit is irrelevant because this approach that we had come up with this visualization made it clear that it was only about rena not about ocean at all right now let me just quickly show you where all of this is taught in the eg mat course so here look at this screenshot here we teach you these skills in a progressive architecture in specially created data sufficiency course after you learn the basics of data sufficiency here in the first module you further hone your process by solving quant based data sufficiency questions and then the verbal reasoning module so it all comes nice and slow step by step ensuring that you build skills as you go and you have the skill set required to go into the next segment Now I'm sure you're excited to apply all of this on a set of practice questions. Remember I talked about two versions of the question we solved. This is version 1 in which I have only changed statement 2. Everything else is the same. You will put your answers in the comment section in this format and then this is version 2 of the same question where every part of the question has been changed. And this is how you will put your answer in the comment. So you can put a single comment where you put answers to both of these versions you can pause the video at the appropriate points solve those questions put your answers and share that with us we will be reading every single comment okay now what's next for you in this series next as i told you we will go into the other two varieties i showed you only variety 1 this time right we saw conditions applied to textual information now there will be conditions applied to tabulated data and then finally comparative analysis stay tuned for all of this i'm sure you had fun today happy learning